Welcome to the Disneyville Podcast. <laughs> Just hated it. Episode three, <laughs> in which we talk about Disney's Hollywood Studios. Ugh, Do you I like just, that? No, I hated it. <laughs> I hated no, everything, you... everything about it, start yeah. to finish. No, we were talking about, we were like, <laughs> in the car the other day, we were like, well, should we talk about like when we have a, like the opening, like have like a set thing we do each time. Like I'm your, we're your host, Tyler and Jessica Brown or whatever. Yeah. And anyway, that, that was my attempt at it. All right. Well, here, let me do my part. Okay. My name's Jessica. This is Tyler. Welcome. Nice to meet me. <laughs> we also decided today that we're going to call you guys that regularly, regularly, that's like saying burglary. It's really weirdly hard burglary. to say. Burglary. Those that Attorneys regularly, general. <laughs> those that regularly watch our podcast or listen to our podcast, we shall call you citizens of Disneyville. I just love that. I Which, do too. It's the perfect episode to kind of talk about that because citizens of Hollywood. Hooray for Hollywood. I wondered who was going to be the first one uh, to do it. It had to be me. I was literally, you guys, <laughs> gearing up by listening to that on YouTube. So good. Just as good as it always is. But uh, the reason we decided to call you Citizens of Disneyville is because uh, I popped on our Instagram, which is at Disneyville Podcast, and was talking to you guys and asking for like, okay, what are your favorite Hollywood Studios things to do? And I called you all Disney villains. And then I was like, oh, I could shorten it and just do Disney villains. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. That's something, that's something different. different. <laughs> so then you, of course, came up with Citizens of Disneyville, which is perfect. Yeah, I think that's I so might, I might, like, diet sometimes just call you Disney villains. <laughs> it's kind of like, what, um, what's his name in the new ride? Where he says Epcotians, Epcotarians, oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's like that. That's Disney exactly. Villains. Yeah. Citizens of Epcot. I didn't know what he said. Did he, did he, yeah. Did he end up wow. Saying Are we just doing that monologue just, was, with our podcast? It was in the back of our minds and we didn't even realize it. Mm, so well. just kidding. Here, I thought we were going to be we were all geniuses. kinds of original. No, we're we not. We are not. Anyway, so we're discussing Hollywood Studios, which I feel like is sort of an underrated park in a lot of ways, or at least it used to be. It's not yeah. as much anymore. They've done so much so many amazing things over the last decade there that it, it's, it's not as much of a, an underrated park as it used to, but it actually was the first one you ever went to, right? Yeah, it was with someone else, Tyler. I hate to say. Who? It's okay. I didn't end up with them, thank goodness. <laughs> really. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it was the first park I ever went to. And it's so, that was back in the days where there was like the back lot tour. And mm -hmm. undoubtedly, we will do an episode about all of these old There's things that are There's a lot of good there. stuff at Hollywood Studios and the uh, extinct attractions world. Oh, that's going to be that a fun episode. That might have to come up sooner rather than later. That's going to be many episodes. <laughs> Extinct attractions like at different Oh, parks. I think we do one for each park. Oh, 100%. baby. You're getting me real excited. I know. I know. Uh, I'll just start planning for it now. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so what was I saying? Oh, it was the first park I'd ever been to. And it was just so magical. And again, that like Hollywood that never was and always will be. Mm -hmm. But it's so good today. Mm -hmm. All the stuff that's there. Like looking through the map and thinking like, okay, what are my top 10? It was overwhelming. I had so many more that I was like, I got to cut them. I yeah. got to cut, <laughs> yeah. cut it. It's so funny because I feel like so many times I hear people talk about like, oh, it's, you know, Animal Kingdom's a half day park or Hollywood Studios is a half day park. And I'm like, y'all are doing it wrong because there's so much good stuff there. Well, and especially now that we have, again, I know we keep bringing it up in every episode, but younger kids, there's so much more there now mm -hmm. that I can't believe is on my list, but it's on my list. I, yeah, same. <laughs> I was like, ooh, this would not have been on it if I didn't have kids, which yeah. would make sense considering yeah. some of them. But yeah, I'm excited to share mine. I Do you have yours ready? I'm ready to go. You're ready ranked, and ranked? Ranked and ready. Um, question though, mm -hmm. because you did this, because I went to Disney World as a kid, so it's a little different, but you were 20, 21 when you mm -hmm. went for the first time, mm -hmm. but you had been to Kings Island and Cedar Point and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you remember like walking into a Disney park for the first time and like, did it feel different? And if so, how? Please explain. There's a whole story I could tell, but it's kind of rude to the person that I was with. Um, so I'm not going to go into that. So you can entering tell me that was after. a little bit weird. Yeah, you'll you'll laugh at it. Um, maybe if we ever start a Patreon, that'd be a story. <laughs> what was the experience? What of was that story? <laughs> it's like what anyway. was in the teapot, Jim. <laughs> What was in the note what in the teapot? In the teapot, Jim. <laughs> anyway, um, I I just remember it feeling cleaner. No, hey, no shade on Kings Island and Cedar Oh, Point we still we go. Love, love them. them. Still go. And we love, like, we've been to Dollywood. Like, listen, we still love other theme parks. So oh, it's yeah. No shade. No hey. But um, it just felt cleaner and it felt more, I always say this because I can't think of a better word. Disney parks to me feel more alive, dynamic. Like they're... 
they're always doing something new. They're always like, I just felt like there'd be dead spots in other, that sounds weird, but I think you know what I mean. Yeah. In other theme parks where you're just like, oh, no one's touched this area in a while. And I don't even, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just like honing in on cleaning. That's yeah. not what I mean. But just in general, you walk around Disney and there's so many performances going on. Like just you're walking down the street and suddenly someone's doing a jig. Yeah. Citizens of Hollywood are just out there being their 1930s best self. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, there is something to that. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think back to like, I feel like Dollywood was pretty good about that. And I can't, I don't I can't remember Silver Dollar City very well. Oh yeah. We went to Silver, we, we, that was a pretty quick, we that only was had like, like a half day. couple days. Yeah. I would totally. Or a couple hours in one day. Yeah. yeah. We anyway. did the cave there though. Okay. Anyway. I was just curious what your thoughts were on that. Yeah. Since you were older. All right. Okay. You want to start this time? All right. All right. I'm excited to hear yours. I just got the butterflies. All right. Ooh. My number 10 is Muppet Vision. Love it. Yeah. It's one of those Love that. It. That is one, like an OG one, of course. Well, I don't know if it was there at Park Open, but like it's certainly been there since was. I've been going. Um, well, either way, I first of all, that whole courtyard over by Muppet Vision is so pretty with the pizza risotto, all of that, and the, all the brick. I always think of brick in that area because I feel like it's mostly... Mm-hmm. And it's just... That's one of my favorite areas for sure. Yeah. But that show is just so fun. And even though the 3D tricks are so old and silly... Well, I mean, it's the Muppets. It's supposed to be silly. But they're kind of old and bad. There's kind of like, that's what I love about it. You know what's so funny, though? There's that one point when, oh, what's the name of the the little the little figment of imagination? that when, Yeah, uh, I can never remember I can't it. think of his name. He comes out and says, everyone thinks that I'm talking to them, but I'm really just talking, talking to, to you. you. That is still, to date, the coolest 3D trick yeah. in any park I've ever seen. I don't know how he did, I've sat in every seat in that seat in, in that theater. <laughs> every one, huh? every single one, and every single time it points right at me. I don't know how they do it. Tyler, but that I don't know how to is... tell you this. They are only talking every to time? you. <laughs> he doesn't do that on the days you're not there. You know what? That does make the most sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, if you aren't familiar with Muppet Vision 3D, we should probably say it's like a 3D Muppets show, but it's a, it's a movie, if you will. But they do have some real life puppets. I don't want to like ruin anything if you've never That's seen the best it. Part. And that is the best part. There are multiple parts like that that are just so fun still to this day. Yeah. And I just love it. And I don't think there's been a trip that's gone by that we haven't ridden it. Or it's so it's funny. Not a ride. <laughs> I wish. It's so genuinely funny too. Like not just the show itself. The show itself is funny. But the queue and all that stuff, if you look at all the little things around in the the area, like the waiting area, mm-hmm. and then when you walk out, like looking around the the just the whole Muppet area. All the things they have like written in paint and stuff like that. They're all hilarious. Yeah, they like, are. It, the Muppets are genuinely very funny. <laughs> they are. You know what? They're funnier to me as an adult than they ever were to me as a kid. And I'm sure, I mean, I think that's kind of intentional. Like we were watching one of the old Muppet ones. The Great Muppet Caper, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, wow, almost all of these jokes would go over a child's head, but they're just funny to us, you know? But I liked them as a kid for different reasons. I feel like they had that silliness aspect to them that makes you laugh as yeah. a kid. And then when you're an adult, they have waka, the... Waka. Like, the actual funny stuff that you wouldn't get yeah okay all right um by the way oh disney mug check for those watching if you don't know us we have a ridiculous amount ridiculous amount (laughs) of disney mugs but i just got this new one that i thought was perfect for hollywood studios day can you see it there says walt disney cartoonist and it says comic cartoons advertising cartoons animated motion picture cartoons and then on the back it has 2719 Hyperion, which is the second, I think, Walt Disney Studios. It's the, the or maybe it's the original one, because they were in a studio on um, Kingswell Avenue, but then they moved it to Hyperion, but I don't think they're there anymore. Well, I love that it literally, that might have been an actual ad they had. Like, it's got the same type typeface you mm-hmm. would have seen, you know, it's just cool. Yeah, I love that. It's so That's perfect appropriate for... for this video. Yeah, I know, right? Oh my gosh. Mine is, if you're curious, a Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket one. It's just kind of cute. It's one that we haven't pulled out in a while yeah. from our collection. This anyway. is giving us a reason to get all of our mugs out again, which is awesome. Because we always switch them. We have like... Like monthly-ish, what, we switch out, out at a time, and then we switch them out because we have a bunch down in our basement because we are psychotic. Okay. My number 10, Disney Junior Dance Party. Disney Junior Party all night. <laughs> Hey, man. First of all, that's a bop. <laughs> okay, that is. I genuinely can't believe it's on my list, though. And there are things that I bumped, like Muppet Vision 3D, that I can't <laughs> believe that I had to bump. 
But it's one of those things that every time we go in, I'm never excited to go in. When we're, I'm like, all right, all right, we'll do it. But then we go in and Gigi just dances oh. and oh, has the best time. And I always like just tear up like watching her. I'm like, this is the best. Like she just gets so excited and it's awesome. I love it so much. Also, the singers in there are weirdly good. Mm-hmm. Like they're un- like every time we've seen it, mm-hmm. they're like unbelievably good. Yeah. Uh, well, one they've changed the show quite a bit, it seems, and I think some of, some of it were like COVID changes. When we saw it for the first time pre-COVID, there were two hosts, and they both sang, and oh my gosh, they sang so well. And now it's I think maybe shorter, but there's usually one host, and it's just kind of condensed, it seems. Mm-hmm. Um, and they don't, I don't feel like they sing as much. So I'm kind of hoping they bring the original back because that was way more fun. I feel like for the adults, I think I've realized. I'll go ahead and explain this now because I think. Disney Junior is, yeah, my number nine. So my number nine, oh, also Disney Junior Dance Party. Again, same yeah. thing. I'm like, I cannot believe this is going to be on my list. but <laughs> On um, the list at all. But it's genuinely fun. Now, would yeah. I go without my kids? No. I mean, no. maybe if you've never seen it, just to have seen it, sure. But, you know. Yeah. And they have some seating, like, in the back. Like, you don't, you don't have to be in, the, like, the little dance area. They have, like, benches and stuff around the edge if yeah. you wanted to just see the show. But Yeah. But um, I think a big reason why we love it so much is not only is it fun, it was one of the first things genevieve could do at disney that she genuinely had fun because she could ride a lot of the rides and stuff but that was like one of the first things where she was like i know these characters i know these songs like it was and i think that's why we both i still get emotional almost every time which is ridiculous (laughs) it's just a bunch of disney junior songs yeah but what's cool if you didn't know after the show lets out typically they'll have some of the characters out for meet and greets in their little houses you'll see there's like little setups for it there's usually very little line yeah which is awesome yeah and those are open sometimes too that oh just even and, like, you don't have to go to the them, show yeah. oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah so that's been fun too mm-hmm. oh that's awesome all right you're number all right nine. so my number nine walt disney presents one man's dream mm-hmm. i just love it i the whole exhibit itself is awesome and i love they have like walt's old desk from when he was a kid and then his like the the one from when he was uh like at the office like his actual executive desk and all that stuff and that is all awesome but they also always end up having like like right now, I think they have one on the Disney Wish. So like whatever, like new parks, new ships, new rides, whatever, they'll have stuff on that too. So mm-hmm. I love the actual Walt stuff. But then they always have some really cool, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Exhibits? Like, yeah, but Models? What's the, no. <laughs> like rotating exhibits? Is that the right word? Yeah, I would say like so. a rotating yeah, area where it's it like, it, it's always something cool and interesting. Um, so that's always cool. I love that. And if you didn't know what that is, it's basically... And I don't even think they have one man's dream. I think it's now just called Walt Disney Presents. Yeah. Because I think yeah. it opens it to be other things. Yeah. Um, but it's basically a walkthrough museum of Walt Disney start to finish, like about his life and all that. And it's got, like you said, Walt's desk and other things like that. And it's so cool. They show how a multi-plane camera say the multi-plane works. Camera. They, they have the camera, right? Yeah. There. Um, or at least then, it's not the actual one. I think it's like a miniature version of it. Because I think the real multi-plane camera is huge. Like really? it takes up like a whole room. Oh, it's cool to see how that works, though. They yeah. do a good job showing it. So it's just a fun, A, if you just need AC. But B, I mean, it's just cool to see the history of it all and see these actual things mm-hmm. just there. Yeah. Just walk in. Never a line. And then they have a show at the end. We've seen a couple times. We don't typically yeah. stay for. But again, another nice AC break. And if you're ever looking for like a Disney biography on, on Walt Disney, the one by Neil Gabler is like the quintessential one in my head. So if you're ever looking for a biography on Walt Disney, it's a big book, but it is... It, sure it is, is. Uh, a very good one. Disney's Land is another good one that talks a lot about his life on top of the Disneyland Park. So anyway, mm-hmm. carry on. All right. My number eight, right? Yeah. Tower of Terror. I'm surprised that's so low, but I guess it does make sense knowing you. When you see you. all my other ones. Well, so first of all, I haven't ridden Tower of Terror in a long time. So I feel like it's kind of low on my mind. I wonder if I'd like ridden it recently. I'd be like, oh, it's number two, you know. Mm-hmm. I love that ride. But drop rides like that are so scary they're so scary guys nope. they're so scary and i Hate love them. roller coasters but drop rides <sighs> that one doesn't Ooh. bother me though because you're like inside versus something like the ones oh. where you're like you're facing outside i won't do those I, I will, i'm done my days of doing those are over i will ride roller coasters all day long i don't like just straight drops on a pole and you never know they just like hold you there oof nope and that, not, not about so it. tower of terror is, is of course just like that but inside i love it though that aside Obviously, the theming is so cool. Being in the lobby and seeing how all these people just vanished and what would be left and what it would look like is so neat. Gosh, I want to ride that again. You, yeah. Um, 
But I love too when you go through when you come out of the mm-hmm. elevator and mm-hmm. you go forward. I remember the first time I rode that, I was like, what? Like I could my brain could not fathom how I figured you would just go up and that was that and you'd start dropping. But the fact that the car would detach and go forward through it and then drop mm-hmm. in a different chamber was it's still unbelievable. It really me. is. You know what my favorite thing though is sometimes when they'll because it's always a different ride sequence. Sometimes they'll speak, make you go up first. That every time makes my <laughs> makes my insides go. Go pee pee. Not that. <laughs> they make me go pee pee. <laughs> okay. All right, your number. No, no, your number oh, seven. My, mm-hmm. No, my number eight. Oh. Right. What did you just do? Did you do number eight? How did this happen? I did nine. Don't. Yeah. Oh, I, I was only looking at eight, nine, and ten. I swear. No, I really. Wasn't. So my number eight. Your number I think eight. You just did number. Eight. Okay. Anyway, Slinky Dog Dash, and we've only done it twice. So I, I, I'm not an expert on it yet, but every time we have ridden it, the two times has been really fun. Mm-hmm. It's been like, and I, I'm like, I'm really excited to take like Gigi on it and stuff like that. But I feel like it's. It's sort of what it's like one of those rides. I feel like there's another one that I can't think of off the top of my head where like it seems like, oh, it's a kiddie ride. It'll be kind of fun. But then you ride it and it's absolutely so much fun. You know what it's like? What? That one that they just tore down in Primeval Dinosaur, World. Or yeah, Primeval World. That should not have been as fun as it was. But yeah, it that was one so fun. was wildly fun. We discovered it way too late. And yeah. then like next thing we knew, they tore it down. That Ugh. was awesomely fun. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. similar to that, though, where it's like way more thrilling than you'd ever guess. Even though it's really made for kids in theory, but yeah, and that second launch, man, so good, mm. so good. We need it. We need to make it a point to ride that this next yeah. time. Yep. Okay, so have you done your number seven yet? So now I'm doing my number seven. It was Walt Disney Presents as well. I know. Do you want to talk about it for like three minutes? No, I think we <laughs> nailed it. That's the one flaw in, the, in these countdowns is we obviously have overlap, but sometimes it works out pretty well. Yeah. Anyway, all yeah. right. So your number seven. Okay. For the first time in forever, a Frozen sing-along celebration. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for that accurate title. That was, again, one of the ones that I can't believe is on my list. But I'll be a sea monkey's uncle if I don't cry every time. (laughs) I cry every time, too. It's the end. When they're doing the snow and Gigi's just singing her heart out, man, Mm -hmm. I'm a goner every time. That's one of those shows, though, that depends entirely on the two hosts, whether it's enjoyable or not. Because yeah. we have done it, and it's it's pretty much the same jokes every time. It's sort of like the Jungle Skipper can not canteen the Jungle Skippers that you get mm-hmm. make or break that ride. Yeah. Same with the hosts there, because we've had some pretty bad hosts. They weren't bad, but they weren't great. But then we've had ones that like I will laugh out loud. Like I, mm-hmm. I even knowing the jokes coming up, they're just hysterical. And so that's a big make or break for that show. But I cry at the end every time. I know, <laughs> I do too. There's something about the mixture of the fake snow and Genevieve loving it. And I can't wait till Felicity's old enough to understand. The snow is fake? I think Elsa actually conjures snow. So. No, she conjures the fake snow. It's oh. still magic. It's just not real snow, you know. Oh, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, and Elsa just singing, man. And it I think it was genius of them to use the original voices for that. Because if it was someone singing it and it wasn't quite like there's something about the just hearing the OG and obviously you know that she's lip syncing. Don't tell <laughs> Genevieve. But you know what I mean. But it still gets us, and we're yeah. grown ups. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know if I could have told you that if you'd asked me if it was lip singing or if it was regular. I, I'm because I, 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 I never pay attention. To, maybe it is. Yeah, I never pay attention. Definitely. I'm just watching Gigi at that point. <laughs> I know. I'm singing along, honestly. <laughs> but it's so fun because if you look around the audience. No one's really watching the stage. Everyone's like watching their own kid. Like at that point, anyway, it's, just, it's just so magical. Disney yeah. did it. That used to be. Yeah. What was it like? American Idol, mm-hmm. whatever. <laughs> yep, that we was got always stories. fun. All right. All right, your number six. Frozen sing along. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, right on track, That's buddy. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, same reasons. And there's this one woman. I bet someone watching this or listening knows who this person is. She's. Well, her wig is blonde. I guess I don't know what. What her, yeah. But she does the one of the storytellers, mm-hmm. and she is just absolutely hilarious. She's so over the top. And now we've seen that woman do it like four times, and she's funnier every time. <laughs> yeah. So go figure. If you yeah. ever, if you get to see her, you'll know. You'll know. And she is funny. She's she so really funny. She totally funny. made me love that show. Yeah. And I always feel like there's been there was a couple guys that were British that were the other 
storyteller Mm -hmm. and they were funny Mm -hmm. and i think it's just the accent but (laughs) the accent makes it funnier they did it perfectly well you can always tell now that we've seen it enough and of course we come from an act like acting world so i feel like we pay attention to this kind of thing but i feel like you can definitely tell when the two of them like working together and when they don't because they'll either click or they won't and we one time we saw it and it was with that one like skinnier dude and he and her were so funny. And now I compare all of them to that yeah. duo and it'll never live up because it was yeah. so, they clearly they were like cracking each other up. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. You could see it like across the stage. They were like making each other laugh. And, and that, that sells me so every time. Yeah. It's like in SNL when people, when they break, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's Jimmy Fallon that used to bother me when he would break, but everyone else I was okay with. Yeah. Which is funny because I like Jimmy Fallon as a late night host. Yeah. I love Jimmy Fallon. So my number six, right? Okay. Toy Story Mania. That low, huh? It is, and I stand by it. <laughs> that is perfect. actually really surprising to me. And it's always so fun. And now it's, again, it's 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 fun again because, like, Gigi gets to play along too. But, like, I think I'm just Forget tired Gigi. of it because I'm playing that for I me, man. every time. And so it's like it's almost not no, even fun uh-uh. for me anymore. Look at the accuracy. <laughs> I, I'll be like 45% accuracy. accuracy, and you're like 10%, but you're just faster. Scoreboard. Yeah, look at the scoreboard and look at the accuracy percentage. I would be more valuable in sports. My accuracy is beautiful, but you're faster. So I guess it depends on the sport. You make 100% of the shots you do take, and I make, I make 40% 10% of, the, of shots. the shots that I Exactly. You just make more take. shots. Jeez. All right. So you're number five. Mm-hmm. Wow. We're flying through I know, this today. Slow down. Number five. And one of you guys on our Instagram gave this as one of yours. So at the end of this, we'll share some of your guys's because I've already taken some screenshots, some that I didn't even think about that I was like, oh my gosh. But one of you said almost this exact same thing. And so I had to share that on our story because I was like, oh my gosh. People watching in the Echo Lake area, specifically, of course, as usual with a coffee and or an ice cream from Gertie's Ice Cream of Extinction. Now, the Echo Lake area is, are you laughing because you like worded exactly this? I say, just look here, see. right there. I just put ice cream at Gertie's, but it was people watching with ice cream. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. the ice cream is fine. Yeah. And actually- It was an honorable mention. It wasn't I, on my top 10, but it was, yeah, I wrote it down. Yeah. I have a story time about getting ice cream there, which if you've seen some of our vlogs, I'm, I'm not going into it <laughs> right, right, Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a mess. But I'll link that video below though, so you can get the story time of what happened because it's hysterical. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That ice cream's okay, but it's just soft serve. So I'm like, uh, you know, I like soft serve, but not all soft serve is created equal. And I think we can all agree on that. Anyway, what am I even talking about? I've completely lost track. Oh, what am I talking about? Okay. I just love people watching that area. The Echo Lake area is, you know, when you first walk in and you walk all the way to the end and there's like the Chinese theater right there, the water to the left, that's Echo Lake. So there's the little dinosaur ice cream shop, dinosaur Gertie's or whatever it's called. Oh, I just said the name, yeah. Gertie's Ice Cream of Extinction. Um, but then there's also the Starbucks kind of across the way. And so a lot of times yeah, we'll just get bit, yeah. iced coffee there and kind of... But it's just so nice. That whole area is so pretty. It's so fun to just sit and watch. And that is definitely the best mm-hmm. area in Hollywood Studios to 100%. watch. 100%. Yeah. It's there's right, something yeah, about There's it. like Hollywood and Vine there too. If you wanted to go into um, like dad's liquor cabinet, if that's your poison, get something to drink, drink and sit there too. That's a fun way to do that. Yep. Um that it's yeah it's there's also some the name and... dad's liquor cabinet is absolutely genius considering it's a part of the uh 50s prime time yeah, yeah i always want to call it sci-fi dine-in no love sci-fi dine-in by the way but anyway yeah i'm talking just... restaurants no restaurants <laughs> anyway yeah love that area yeah yeah it was on my honorable mention list but i couldn't nothing on my top 10 list i could take off oh my gosh to put it on there you're number five okay rise of the resistance number five was that high or low? Low. Really? I got to thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> and I still have my my other ones that we're going to go in. And I was like closing my eyes and trying to picture being like on each one. <laughs> and I'm like, the others make me a little bit happier. I love this concept, but the, I think part of the problem is neither one of us are big Star Wars people. Mm-hmm. We just lost half the audience. But Hey, no, we like Star Wars. And we, we like watched Star them Wars. all. Yeah. And we did it in the right order. Four, five, six, one, two, three, and then the randoms. Yeah. Right? But. Totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> what is wrong with us? I don't know. But. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I love the concept 
of it being so multifaceted and you do so many different things and you're walking and it's an immersive thing. I just wish it was Harry Potter themed. <laughs> I want Universal to do something very much like that with Harry Potter. Wonder. That's really Universal, just what I you want. L- you listening? They're like, no, this is a Disney podcast. We're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Disney's not listening either. <laughs> oh, no. They don't. But that's, they don't I, so we, let me, let me say. just say the fact that you do so many different things. There's like the parts where you're walking, you have like the, there, it, it really is an amazing ride. And the drop at that point, I'm not giving anything away. It is so good. You so don't have. get me wrong. I love it. But I want it to be, I want there to be Dementors. <laughs> Dement- the Dementors. The Dementors. That's two of the office references. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I'll speak more on that in a bit. Okay. All right. So your number four. My number four is Runaway Railway. Mickey and Minnie's That's Runaway my Railway. That's number four. Yay! Um, gosh. I was so sad. So sad. <laughs> so sad so when the great sad. movie ride closed. We bought a shirt. I think we bought a pin. We might have <laughs> bought a magnet. We even have a hat. Yeah. I think we... Well, no, I don't know that we bought a hat. We bought everything we could possibly find. Great movie ride related. That was truly so weird and just weird. And I think that's why I liked it. You know what I mean? Like there's something almost unsettling. And that's what I love about being on a ride where there's, you know, audio animatronics everywhere. And you recognize them because it's, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West and Dorothy and uh, Mary Poppins. But they're not quite them. So it's like Uncanny Valley. <laughs> and it's just one of those things that, man, I love that feeling. I loved it Weird, so much. And it was a long ride. We rode it every time we went. We, we wouldn't miss it. I might need to watch a ride through <laughs> to I, get me I think, through this. But I think I have a ride through on my channel. I think you do, actually. I say all of this to say that I was the number one saddest person in the whole wide world about this ride closing. <laughs> And I love its replacement. I yeah, absolutely love it. They did it. a great job. They really, so. really did. And it's so funny because I've, I've heard some people be like, oh, it's just a projection show and this, that, and the other. I'm like, yeah, but it's impressive as heck. It is so cool. And that's what Universal does. They have so many rides that almost all of it is just like 3D stuff you're going yeah. through. They're all on screens. But I just Very think screen heavy. It is so well done. I just love that ride. I think it's mm-hmm. so it's so immersive when you're in there like these huge cavernous rooms and like they have i just i think they did an amazing job so i love that ride and again it's one of the ones that Gigi can ride too felicity so can ride whole family can go on it together mm-hmm. i love that but it's just i i think they did a fantastic job and the, the little homages they have back to the old one too like the twister and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. i just i i i love it I love there are it. quite a few easter eggs in that one there's another one where i'm trying to remember what it says i think oh it's the great moving ride they have like a poster for it i think i think in the circus scene i might be butchering this but it, let yeah, us know if you're familiar. especially if you're watching on youtube where you can comment comment below if i'm missing if i'm screwing that up but yeah there are easter eggs in there i think probably more than we realize uh to the great movie right which i just think is so cool but yeah i just i think they did a good job they yeah. never let us down and i also love that you can kind of figure out it's kind of like the frozen ever after how it replaced maelstrom and you can yeah. kind of see the schematics of like, they literally just reuse the same ride sequence, yeah. but just totally replace what was in there. And I think that's cool. Well, and what's funny is not long before they closed it, they changed or they updated the great movie ride. And they did, they put like a new soundtrack in and they had like, cause it used to be like the live people talking. And then they had, um, what's his name from Whatever, Turner classic from movies, Turner classic movies. Yeah. And so you could hear it better. And I was like, Oh, they're updating it. They're going to keep it. And then they, they did not. <laughs> yeah. Go but anyway, it. yeah, I think they've done a great job. And we'll always have, we'll always have Paris. Wow. You should do voice work. No. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm doing that right now. All right. So you're, since we both did number four, you're number three. Okay. Number three, Rise of the Resistance. Yeah. I would never, if you had asked me a few years ago, like pre-Galaxy's Edge opening, if you had asked me if any of the Star Wars rides would have been in my, even top 10, I would have been like, no. I mean, because Star Tours, you know, it's fine. Oh my gosh, Rise of the Resistance is so good. And that certain, there are certain parts, and I'm not going to spoil, but the part of the walkthrough parts is so unbelievably real. And again, it's unsettling. And I love that feeling. And I think that's a big reason why I like that. And there are certain, I'm trying not to ruin anything for anyone that hasn't ridden it because it is still pretty new. Yeah. But certain parts where you go in and there are large things in there from the Star Wars world that you 
it's all so real. It all feels so real. Oh my gosh, I'm thinking of more and more parts. Parts where you see, what's his name? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. What's his name? Uh, uh, <laughs> I was going to say Darth Maul. No. No, not Darth um, Maul. Come on. Adam Kylo Driver. Ren. Kylo Ren, yes. Hey, Adam Driver is from Indiana, where we are from, by the way. I keep accidentally turning on my flashlight on my phone. <laughs> um, Adam Driver, you tall drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Adam Driver. I Who have doesn't? to say, I love Adam. I know Driver. there's something about him, and actually, it was Star Wars that made me love him. Anyway, he yeah, really is that so ride is full of so many surprises, so many surprises. Even if you think you know all of them, you don't. I love it. I love it so much. So that's my what number was that? Three. Three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, my number three, Tower of Terror. Okay, you better sell me on why it deserves. I love Tower of Terror. Why number three? That's so high. Because. It still gives me the Hollywood Studios nostalgia Aww. on top of everything else. I mean, it's just a thrilling ride. And I just wrote it when I was there in October with my brother. And that was really fun because we yeah. got to go. And we did the, uh, he hadn't written it since he was like a little kid. And we had a whole story about it. I'll link that vlog below too if you want to uh, watch it. Are you guys annoyed story. with us already? <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, it was it was really fun writing it again. And I'm like, I, I almost, you forget how good it is. And then you write it again. And just the lobby and how like everything is just covered in cobwebs. And it's so intricate. They've done such a good, I'm like, it's been around for so long now and it is still so good. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's up there for me. And it's so thrilling because again, like I said, every time is a different ride. So you never know what's, what's coming next. So how do you think they differentiate between the fake cobwebs and real ones? (laughs) They don't. (laughs) They don't. That's part of the, part of the fun. No maintenance on that ride. It's actually just dirty. Yeah. I, do they still do the uh, where you go in the room and you see, um, well, an actor that looks a lot like Rod Sterling, right? Rod Serling? Yeah. What, what are you talking about? Where you go in the room and there's like the light or the... <laughs> oh, in the, the pre-show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, they still do that. Okay. It's yeah. really been like years since I've um, yeah. seen that. Okay. It was funny because there was somebody who was standing next to us and I saw her mouthing along all of the words. And then you go through to like the boiler room next. And I asked her, I was like, are you a cast member? And she's like, yeah, how'd you know? I said, because you mouthed along every single word of that. <laughs> I was like, you were either a cast member or... <laughs> Something or like that. You should follow our podcast. <laughs> You're our people, man. Oh, that's cool. All right, number two. Two. These the my last two were really really hard to rank. Go ahead, you do your number two. Okay, my number two. You go do your number two. <laughs> what is wrong? What is wrong with you? That's <laughs> three. Um. All right, my number two was phantasmic. Mine too. Doesn't it just give you, like, my heart just, like, really was beaten fast, y'all. Yeah. I just, I'm so glad it's back. I cannot wait to see it next time we're there. That is, I feel like, what Disney parks are all about. Like, any of those kinds of spectacles that they do, all of them are good. All of them. Even Rivers of Light. <laughs> yeah. We didn't love it, but it was good. I mean, it's not. Fantasmic, though, has the real characters, what other Disney, like, spectacular like that, other than, like, a castle show or whatever? Mm-hmm. None of the fireworks ones, you don't see real characters. The yeah. fact that a boat comes out and there's literally all of them on it's it. It's just so spectacular. It's unreal. Yeah. It's unlike anything else they do. And when we saw it in Disneyland, it was so cool because I feel like you're even closer, mm-hmm. right? Um, but Disney World, it's almost even more magical because you're farther and there's so many people there. It's so massive. And it's so good. The music is so good. It's it's totally worth like getting there early, sitting and waiting. I remember one time we went and it was colder, like in the evening, and we were sitting way too close. And so all the water spray was getting on us and we were just straight up shivering. Yeah. That was the only time I did not enjoy it. That's one of my recommendations is you want, you think you want to sit close, but don't. It's scoot back because you can see all of it better, but also you don't want to get sprayed with all the water. Sprayed. Unless it's the middle of the day, which it yeah. never is because it's at night. So. Yeah, it was. I, it used to be my number one all-time favorite nighttime show. Then Happily Ever After came along and stole my heart. But it is, I you know, I don't even know if I could pick between the two. And luckily, I don't have to. They That's have right. both. They, but you it's can do just, both. It's, so, it's such a massive spectacle of a show. Mm-hmm. And... I just, you, every time I see it, it's bigger than what I remember. The theater is bigger than I remember. The sets, the costumes, the, it, the boat coming out. It's just unbelievable. Like it's, it's, it's like a child's fever dream. <laughs> it, honestly. Yeah. yeah. That's what, it, that's what the tagline should be. Fantasmic. A child's, a child's fever, fever dream. Fever dream. <laughs> um, what is your favorite part of Fantasmic? At the very end when he's at the top and then he magically appears at the bottom. Oh, 
That's the best part. That is. We should watch that with Gigi on TV, oh, like on YouTube, you know? <laughs> um, I love, okay, this is not my favorite part, but one of my favorite parts is at the beginning when Mickey is, he's got his hands up and he's doing the, and he's just going back and forth with his arms up and it's just so cute and weird and yeah. I love it. And they haven't changed that choreo. Well, I'm assuming they haven't. Yeah. I don't know. We haven't seen the adjusted version right no i know and i'm so excited i haven't watched like a, a watch through of that yet because i don't want to I, I i've been i unbelievably knock on wood i have not really heard about the changes yet because anytime i see an article about it or whatever i skip it because i'm like i want to be surprised when it when we yeah. see it so they'll be like surprise the audience is in the show and then the <laughs> cast members just watch you um also i was convinced <laughs> that there was a part of phantasmic and tyler had to tell me i was wrong I was convinced that there was a part of Fantastic where Pocahontas jumps off the cliff and into the water. I don't even know you where. You were so certain about it. But I, I knew she didn't jump into the water. But like, no, like definitely she appears on a cliff, which does happen. And I swear to you, she jumped off that cliff. But then I, I think I'm confusing it with the real movie. But she yeah. does yeah, jump. Yeah. Oh, if that had really happened, that'd be a lot of... The insurance costs alone. The insurance alone. alone, I mean. <laughs> so I guess that doesn't really happen, but I want you next time you see it, if the Pocahontas is even still a part of it, I don't know if it is, but if it is, when she appears on the cliff, I want you to think about me being like, oh, Here she's going to jump, jump off. <laughs> uh, Number one. All right, go ahead. I don't know why I'm looking. I know what it is. Toy Story Midway Mania. <laughs> that high. Sell me on it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just let uh, me paint you a picture. We go on, through our let me close my eyes. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay, go ahead. We go through our lives mm -hmm. day in and day out as Every adults. Day. Working our tushes off. Mm -hmm. Everything's serious. You got deadlines. You got emails to answer. You're definitely addicted to your phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when you get in that Toy Story Midway Mania vehicle, one hundred percent you're a kid. And now I'm gonna about to get weirdly emotional for real. Because if you really think about it, like it's one of the only like riding rides is is kind of childlike in its own way, you know. Being but in Disney in general. Yeah, is, yeah, absolutely. And maybe that's why we love it. I mean, that's certainly one of the reasons. But there's something about that ride where you genuinely get to just play. And it's actually fun. Cause you know, like you play with your kids and it can be fun, but Especially with like younger kids, you're doing pretend play and you're probably not 100% into it, but you love your kids, so you play with them. But that kind of play is actually fun for adults and it's actually fun for kids. And I look forward to it every time. And every time I get off, I'm like, I want to do it again. I want to hit that plate. I love the feeling yeah. of when the ball hits that plate. Yeah. Those games are so much fun. So oh, side note, if you've never ridden Toy Story Midway Mania, that is my number one, as you know now. Do not skip it. Do not skip it. I promise you will love it. We've had all of the grandparents ride it. Like everyone I know. Felicity can usually ride with us too. Yeah, like yeah. We'll we hold just her, hold her yeah. in her lap. Um, just amazing. Yeah. I and just it, love it. It's kind of like one of those rides, kind of like Soren. We've talked about, and if you haven't watched the other episodes, where there are certain things in Disney that even if you're not a Disney person, like if you have a grandparent who's going because they want to be with the family, but they're not big Disney people or whatever, that's one that usually everyone mm -hmm. will enjoy doing. Like, yeah. Like I can see people like, that Any are not age. Disney people just being like, well, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's no learning curve. You just get better at it. What is your favorite scene? Which game, I should say, is your favorite? The plate toss is pretty satisfying. Where you're like throwing at the plates. There's yeah. also like the rings that go over the aliens. Those I don't like because I can't feel like... It's harder. I, I, you have to like upshoot that. Yeah. The balloons are fun with the darts. Ooh, yeah. What about you? Uh, definitely the plates. Every time yeah. we get to that scene, I'm like, Yes! <laughs> I want to go smash some planes. <laughs> so yeah. good. All right. So my number one is not even on your list at all. I know. I'm intrigued. Rock and roller coaster. Ah, yes. Yeah. I knew you wouldn't like it. You, no, you... I love rock and roller coaster. No, but. I just have passed out on it one too yeah. many times. Because <laughs> that, when you first take off, it's intense, man. It is. You it's go... not usually then that gets me. It's like after the second loop, let's say. And that does not typically, and really it only started happening to me. It sounds scarier than it is. I'm, I'm fine. I don't like actually black out or anything, but you know, you get that feeling and I never had it until I had kids. So now I'm very choosy about how yeah. often I ride it. When I do love it though. When I don't even know if we were married yet. We went to Cedar Point and rode Top Thrill Dragster. Oh my gosh. I don't think I'd do it now. Whew. I would. 
but that ride okay kids. so i gotta survive <laughs> one of us has to survive. rock and roller coaster goes zero to 60 i forget exactly like in in 3.2 seconds let's say top thrill dragster goes zero to 120 in like 1.5 seconds or something unreal, ridiculous you guys i don't remember the exact numbers but it, i think it's 60 to one i know when it opened it broke records and so it is twice as fast in half the amount of time <laughs> And terrifying. when we rode that, we waited forever in line for, for Top Thrill Dragster. And then we sat there on the ride and sat there and sat there and sat there for like 20 minutes. And they were like, all right, now we're ready to go. I'm like, well, why were we sitting here for 20 minutes? Can we talk about this? Can we yeah. say, was there something on the track? Did something Should break? Should you run it once, once to make without, sure? <laughs> without humans on it? Anyway, yeah, that was nuts. But uh, Rock and Roller Coaster, I feel like, is a lot more fun because that was just terrifying <laughs> yeah that was just more scary that, than, yeah. yeah but the I, it's just so fun and i love that initial the initial jolt is awesome but there's the few times where like you can see the track in front of you and it's a, it's a great big track and like you're kind of going down and around and it's just uh that's like a true roller coaster to me and i just i just love it the one thing about that that i'm always like Ugh, other than me almost passing out every time <laughs> Is the pre-show they do with Aerosmith is fun. And like the first time or two you see it, you're like, oh, okay. And now I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you have like a fast pass back, LOL, back in the days of fast pass. But like if you have a lightning lane, you're like, all right, can we just, can we just I'm I just want to get ride. on the ride. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, the, uh... I like the pre-shows really genuinely in any of them, because if you are waiting in that line, you're going to be waiting anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So at least you've got something to look at. Oh my something gosh. To do. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, there are rumors going around right now. They're going to replace the band. And I never put any never put any stock in any rumors unless Disney actually announces it. And even then, half the time, especially recently, stuff they announce doesn't come to fruition anyway. Yeah, but uh, I've heard they're thinking about changing the band on what that. Would they I've also now? heard they're they might be changing the entire theming. So who knows? We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, it, I think it'd be cool just because again, I love the ride. But we have been lucky enough to do it so many times that I think it'd be fun to do a new overlay or a new mm -hmm. uh, new soundtrack or whatever. So we'll see if that. But Aerosmith songs are pretty awesome with they that are. ride, I have yeah. to say. So, you know, it's it, it makes sense. But now I feel like not as many people, especially like younger people, know who Aerosmith... I mean, they probably do, but not... I feel like even when it opened, they didn't. But it's just one of those yeah, bands. They, they've they been well, around. Yeah. And you everyone knows the songs. They might not even know their Aerosmith songs, but they're like, oh, I know that song. You I wonder know what why I mean? they named themselves Aerosmith. Oh, let me get Steven on the phone. I'll ask. All right. So, you want to hand me my phone there? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah! I Shall took we some do some uh, yeah some audience participation? Oh, I wanted to say I typed into my notes realization. <laughs> I've had a lot. Like one, adults don't play hard enough. <laughs> Two, the one I actually typed that there really is a lot more to do in this park for adults than I realized. And I've always known that, like, in my mind, if, if someone were like, okay, I have a 14-year-old, which park should I go to? I would say Hollywood Studios. Even 10 years ago, I would have said that. Mm -hmm. But really, there is so much to do for adults there, which is really cool because yeah. I feel like, you know, with Rock and Roller Coaster, Tower of Terror, but even with the new Star Wars stuff, both of the new Star Wars rides are, I would say, geared towards older kids. I'm, I'm saying adults. I mean, older kids and adults. Mm -hmm. But then they also still have a really good amount of younger kids stuff. Like, that's probably one of Genevieve's favorite easily parks, favorite yeah. parks. Probably number two under Magic Kingdom because there's the Disney Junior area. Um, the Goofy Ride is what she calls it. The Goofy Ride. Mickey all of yeah. Toy Story Land. Um, the We didn't even mention it. The little shorts, the Mickey Mouse shorts thing. Yeah. The Frozen show. We didn't even talk about the Beauty and the Beast sing-along mm -hmm. show. There is so, and also Indiana Jones. Oh my yeah. gosh, there's so much to do at Hollywood Studios. Did you have any other honorable mentions, by the way, that you? Didn't I didn't. Have? I decided not to do those. I just basically named them: Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, I had one more honorable mention. Okay. That people I think probably are going to be upset wasn't on our list: Millennium Falcon, Falcon Smuggler's Run. Mm. But it's not on my list for a reason. We've done it twice, I think. I think so. And I think the first time we did it we had like a because you, like you actually control you actually change things you're actually doing stuff you know when you're pressing buttons it it's actually like a like simulator changes. ride but yeah you're, you're given right. a job and you actually have to it do makes the a job. difference <laughs> versus like mission space where it's like you can press the button or not it'll still happen yeah. but like it actually does make a difference and the first time we did it um, and it, it will affect the length of the ride as well um the first time we did it we had like an eight-year-old as our pilot mm -hmm. so that ride lasted all of like 12 seconds mm -hmm. so that was not fun <laughs> and then the second time i think it was just you and i I don't think we had because there's seats for four, but I think just you and I went on. Yeah. Or no, we maybe we did a single rider. 
Yeah. Something. And so whatever it was. So we haven't like ridden it together and like actually done, you know, done it. So mm-hmm. I think we need to actually do it again, do it right, and hopefully have a good foursome of commanders and pilots and whatever else. And then yeah. I, it might change my mind on that one. Well, and again, like you said, we haven't ridden it a lot. And the two times we did, we were like, eh. so yeah. yeah, I think it probably would after we wrote it more. So want to see what you guys said on Instagram. I'll start reading some of the ones I'd already taken screenshots of. This one surprised me. Spread Joy Angie said, Star Tours. I know it gets overshadowed by Galaxy's Edge, but it's still really fun. I know that I made fun of Star Tours earlier, but the times we have ridden it, it is still fun. But it's just so hard to compete with so much other technology that's out there. I'm honestly kind of surprised they kept it. I'm not surprised they kept it. I'm surprised they've kept it where it is. That's it. I'm it's not in Galaxy's Edge. It's probably which, too hard to move. I mean, I, I guess. It's probably just know. not worth worth it. Yeah, yeah. You know, to just move it to be in the area, it's like, well, it's close enough, kind of. But, um, you know, it's something to do, and there's usually not a wait. And and I do still, like, every time we've ridden it, it's still fun. It's oh, still yeah. a Disney ride. But it's just, it's hard to compete with the other ones that are out there. So I was very surprised to hear that one of you guys really, really likes it that much. When, uh, when Darth Vader's on it. And that... That, me every that time. is awesome. Boop, beep, beep. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? I have no idea. Okay. Oh, the Indiana Jones show. R-L-G-C-N-Y said that. Um, that is such a good show, but it has been a long time since we've gone and they haven't had technical issues and had to just make everyone leave. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't listening. I was thinking Indiana about Jones. My... It's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the last three times we've gone, we sat down. We're all excited. We're finally seeing this show again. And they're like, oh, <laughs> they'll do one minute. The ball rolls and he avoids it. And then they're like, cut. And then we're like, oh, okay, part of the show. And they're like, no, everyone needs to leave. We're like, okay. <laughs> so we haven't actually gotten to see it, but that is such a fun show. And especially if you've never been to the park or never seen that show, 100% recommend. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, it really is. I'm still kind of surprised that it's still there. Again, it takes up so much land. And there's a lot that has to go right again. I mean, there's a reason it's been shut down halfway yeah. through the show, like three times. I think it's kind of a people eater too. And so it's an it's an easy one to like leave because mm-hmm. it does pull so many people out. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why. But it is entertaining. Every it's time we've watched it show. and seen, they've been able to watch it, you know? Yeah, all the way through. <laughs> so it's funny. I, we have a lot that say Tower of Terror, but we have an equal amount that say not Tower of Terror. <laughs> And those are that's, so that's our family. Funny. They don't like drop drop ones either. So uh, Emily Cherry said, "Ride Slinky Dog at night specifically," and I don't know that that's we've done cool. that. We need to make that happen. Yeah, I love that idea. I, if, is Gigi tall enough to ride it? I feel like she's close. I think she is. We might have to we do like ride or switch. That. Yeah, because Felicity definitely can't. But okay, this might be my favorite one we got. Kendra Barrel said, the crowd doing the wave before Fantasmic. I don't know why, but I love it. That made yeah. me smile so hard because it's totally a thing. You get yeah. there. I mean, everyone tries to get there somewhat early to actually have a seat. And yeah, they always, they do the wave. There's like all kinds of hype. Yeah. Is it even cast members doing it or is it just randoms? They, do they still have, they used to have cast members walking around with microphones as sort of like a pre-show. Well, and they I usually get them to do the wave. But so I don't know, I wonder, are they still doing that? Well, I don't know. We'll have to go see I it. mean, they just reopened, so who knows? A lot of people have brought up Baseline Tap House, which we're not talking about like restaurants and stuff this time. We'll talk about that next time. But there's like a lot of people talking about. It was a good addition. Yeah, I agree. Um. Okay, well, speaking of that, Jack Daniels and Coke Slushy before <laughs> riding Rockin' Roller Coaster. Give me to pass out faster. Put give me a Jack and Coke, and then put me on Rock and Roll Coaster. <laughs> I don't think so. That that sounds awesome though. That yeah, sounds fun. Wait, also, where are you getting a Jack Daniels and Coke slushy? They used to have that at that That's one cool. right outside of um, uh, the the backlot tour, but I don't know where they have it now. Interesting. I would split one with you, and then you can get on Rock and Roller Coaster. <laughs> um. So Kia. I think Kia, Kaya, sweet, said, I always take the time to look at the hand, the hand prints and the footprints in front of the theater. You just that. did that last time. I was just, I don't think that vlog has gone live yet, but I was just looking at you um, going through all of them. And there's picking so up some many. Of the cool ones. Yeah. And it's really the people, you guys. So yeah. there's that whole area and it really is the celebrities that signed it and put their, they really did it there. Just like in, in, in yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. I just think that's so cool because they could have easily just done, you know, facsimiles, but no, they really. Well, and the history of Hollywood Studios is really cool because you look at like back when they first opened, it was a working studio. I mean, there's so many things we're not going to go into the whole history today, but like they actually had planned on it being a Florida 
studio working mm-hmm. there. Um, and so they had a lot of celebrities coming in and Bette Midler, I think filmed one or two movies there. Like there was a mm-hmm. lot that they were doing originally. Um, and so they had real celebrities, real life celebrities coming out. A lot of you guys are talking about food and coffee and it's making me really happy. <laughs> this one, Stephanie Fiddler said, eat a Wookiee cookie at Backlot. Just being honest. I have never had a Wookiee cookie. We need to like actually start making this. I know, right? I want to try the slushy. I want to try a Wookiee cookie at Backlot. Um, Rosalie Buzzbear said, sit on the private rock wall outside of Tower of Terror with Joffrey's iced coffee. Secret spot. Ooh, I liked that. I like that Secret a lot. Secret spots. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Danielle on the Daily, shopping down Hollywood Boulevard with a lion's latte from Joffrey's. What are all of these things? Here I am thinking we know everything and we don't know nothing. <laughs> you know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> I really want to make that list. Oh, this person. Lion's latte. <laughs> She said it to me, too. I sent this to Jess, too, but eat a Wookiee cookie. Don't judge me. They're so good. <laughs> I'm going to Google. What's a Wookiee cookie? I can't Hold believe on. I've never even heard of it. I'm literally looking it up. Okay, this person, again, we're not talking about food. That said, the peanut butter and jelly shake at 50s primetime is so good. <gasps> the Wookiee cookie is an oatmeal cookie. I know I lost some of you, but come back with cream filling. Ooh. Look at that. It's two oatmeal cookies with cream in the middle. <gasps> we might have to make cookies tonight. And then we got to make cream. And we're then we got to defi- take the cookies and put the cream in the middle. <laughs> we're definitely doing that. So we're totally going to try. That looks absolutely awesome. Arlena. <laughs> we know yeah. Arlena. Uh, said Fantasmic is number one. Cry every single time. Yep. Yep. And then Martha. We also know Martha. Both of these are agents of, that of work at the agency. agency. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Martha said, jam out to Disney mania songs while waiting for Fantasmic. You know what is so interesting about that? So many people talking about the pre-show to Fantasmic being a favorite part. And I think that is awesome because everyone, like, it's almost like a collective thing. Everyone's excited. Everyone's waiting. You've had a long Disney day. Back to the sweat. I told you I'd work it in every time. (laughs) You're sweaty, but you feel better now because it's cool. The sun's gone down. The sweat has mostly dried. Mm, Life is good. Yeah. Okay, so I think the last one I have here, because there's a lot of a lot of really good ones, but it's stuff we've talked about. So I'm yeah. trying to look and see. Um, here's a really good one. Um, Deborah Debbie Moody said, Legends of Hollywood to shop for Pandora charms. I get one charm every trip. That's fun. I love that. I could see your mom doing that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that yeah. That would be lovely. Because that what a fun idea. Yeah, and then, you know, after a while, you've got a whole bracelet of Disney yeah. charms. That's a cool, and you know yeah. what? I have spent more on less at Disney. Like, <laughs> yeah. those are expensive, but I mean, so was everything else at Disney. So at least with that, like, what a cool yeah. idea. I love that. Oh, I love this. Chris Lee said, arriving by Skyliner. Love that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So good. That whole that whole station they did, the bus station and the Skyliner station, that whole area they redid recently. It's, it's really, really nice. nice. Yeah. And it's just cool. Even if you came via bus, walking under the Skyliner the whole way. That's yeah. what I almost always get a shot for Instagram of that when we're yeah. walking. I can't help it. It's just, it's just cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. Third episode down. This is this so is fun. But you know I can't fun- believe any of you guys are listening. We genuinely love, we are loving doing this. So the fact that any of you guys actually tune in or you watch or whatever is unreal to us i know like we said before we literally would just do this in the car exact exactly exactly this, this you guys and so we're just like let's just record it see if anybody else wants to hear about it i can't <laughs> believe that anyone does but now i i do have a question i have a question for you guys because i'm always curious if you're listening especially if you're if you started on episode one and you're you know we're here we are episode three and hopefully we've got hundreds ahead of us but and you're still listening are you someone like do you understand every place we're talking about do you because that's one thing we're kind of talking about like do we need to explain a little bit more about some of the like rides we're talking about and that's why you might have heard me interject like if you've never ridden it that's something we're we're juggling with you know how many people listening to this know exactly what we're talking about every time or Or should we be a little more descriptive yeah because even Disney people might not have written everything or seen every, you know. So we're fine with explaining more. But I, I feel like that's a good thing to ask now while we're still early on what your level of knowledge is. Yeah. Because if it's overwhelmingly that, you know, I know most of it, but like sometimes I'm lost. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, and I don't want to, I never want to assume stuff either because yeah. I don't want to assume people know what we're talking about when they don't. Well, and mm-hmm. one thing, if you're listening to this, if you end up watching the version on YouTube, I'm usually putting B-roll of the a rides and things. Cool so, so if you are not quite sure what we're talking about, but you watch this, you'll be able to see sort of some of the ride throughs and stuff as we're as yeah. we're talking about them. You, it takes you a long time to edit the video version because he puts so much footage 
that we have of, like he said, the rides and the shops or whatever it is, the area we're talking about. So you get to actually see it. So that's cool. Yeah, and it could be one of those things that maybe you listen to it in the car and then you pop home and you're like, I want to see what, they what were their about. coffee mugs were that they said <laughs> you could pop onto our YouTube. And <laughs> yeah. We, uh, cause this is primarily a, obviously a podcast, but it's, we're filming it too. So you yeah. got, you get the best of both worlds. Yeah. You get to um, pick. Once I get all of the B roll footage, organized because that's the problem they're yeah. all it's all separated by trip so i have to go back in my mind and be like okay when did we ride this i when cannot did we do that? i don't even know how and i have to go back to and that. think about it takes me a long time but once I, I need to take like a week set aside a week organize it all and it'll go much faster because then i'll be able to find everything much quicker yeah but that's all right that's that's my own thing i'll, I'll, I'll deal with that <laughs> and let us know too i know i like lightly mentioned patreon this is a just a passion project for us because we love disney and um it does take us a lot of time though. <laughs> it takes like a lot of time out of our of work day. And, yeah. yeah. And then the planning, prepping, and then it, it's just a afternoon lot. of filming and, then, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It takes a while to film. Um, so we've talked about doing a Patreon for this. We were not totally sold. We know that like, it's a big part of, especially the podcast world. Um, so we're not against it. We already know what we would offer to Patreons. Like we have ideas yeah. of like what but if that you have, would be. But if you have some ideas of like what we could offer, I mean, I'm always, yeah. always open Especially to ideas. Especially if you're someone that you already, because Patreon, that's a new thing to both of us. Like I, I we were really... investigating, we're like, oh, okay. So we're it's pretty new. I don't know if we're going to do it or not. And maybe we would wait a little while. Yeah. Because um, we also have plans for merch in the future and like cool Disneyville stuff. Yeah, Very excited that about. I'm really excited that about. That part is like definitely going to happen. So just give us your feedback on that. And of course, if you've not rated us yet on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, please do that um, unless you hated it, in which case, please don't. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. <laughs> well, but like really, yeah. if you're still listening all the way at the end and you're not liking it, what are you doing? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but really, if you are enjoying it, please rate us because that does help us mm -hmm. um, when people are difference. searching for it. And of course, it means a lot. We read any of the ratings and like reviews that come in. If there's like a comment, we read through them. It's exciting. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm having a blast doing this. I this has too. been so fun. And we are still eventually planning on getting this up to once a week. But right now, it's it's it's, it's taking a while. We're working on a... Fit. I know we're just like chatting. Um, and sorry, I just cut you off. But we're no. working on a permanent space. Because right now, we're like literally in our office at home. And we have to set all of this up and tear it back down and set yeah. it back up. And so that alone took you like an hour and a half yeah. today. My point in mentioning that is... Once we actually have our permanent space set yeah. up in a future area, then we might actually be able to do it. Yeah, it's going to be much easier. So once mm -hmm. the B-roll is organized and once the set is, is up. a set. <laughs> yeah, then it'll be, we can probably go to one a week at that yeah. point. Yeah. Which would be fun. Yeah. Because we got a lot to say. Lots to say. I was just looking at our episode list today and I'm like, oh. we're covered for at least a year. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Even at one a week. It just gets longer. We got a I know. lot. Yeah. There's just so much to say and so much to talk yeah. about. But Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in, whether it was on our podcast or on the YouTube channel. This has yeah. been so much fun. Yeah. And please follow us on um, social media, most notably Instagram. We're the most active on, which yes. is at Disneyville Podcast, especially if you do want to be mentioned here on our podcast. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>